Welcome to lecture nine of the Kibo Cube Academy, introduction to CubeSat communication system. My name is Yoshihiro Tsuruda, lecturer of Tokyo University, Faculty of Science and Engineering, Department of Aerospace Engineering. My research topics are micro, nano, pico, satellite system design, and electrical component design, and ground station development. I've been involved in various micro, nano, pico satellite projects, including CubeSat, since 2010. In this lecture, I will share technical topics based on my experience. In this lecture, I will cover these six categories. First, I have introduced the overview topic of communication. I will then introduce what is antenna and key specifications of antennas. I also describe typical antenna design examples for CubeSat. The third chapter will cover radio hardware. TX means transmitter, RX means receiver. I will talk about sing, uh, signal processing concept and software functions, including digital packet format in the fourth chapter. The fifth and last chapter will describe ground station development and interface checks for CubeSat and what is an end-to-end -end test of a telecommunications subsystem. Finally, I'll conclude my lecture. Let's begin with chapter one, introduction. In section 1.1, I talk, give an introduction of telecommunication subsystems for micro, nano, pico satellite, including CubeSat. In this lecture, uh, telecom stands for telecommunication. As you know, RF radio frequency is the most powerful and mature option to get information or send command from to a long distance. Generally speaking, the telecommunication subsystems responsibility is a very long-term activity. A satellite project starts from frequency coordination and radio sta station license coordination. Before launch and uh, orbital uh, operation, before uh, finishing with sending an RF transmit uh, transition command, termination command. In the case of a university project, uh, this means uh, entry project, the amateur station UHF or BHF is most popular. Amateur radio satellite have a very long history since 1961, uh, Oscar 1's first launch. Therefore, there is uh, much practical know-how to develop a small satellite within limited resources. This heritage is also very useful for CubeSat development. If you face any development difficulties in your amateur radio mission, please actively release information about your mission to the amateur radio community. The amateur radio community must support your project. On the contrary, 
experimental stations like S band or X band tend to be used for matured projects like Earth observation or science mission. To use S band or X band, generally a parabola antenna facility is needed. So the initial cost tend to be high. Therefore, in many cases, after accumulating some experiences in a lower frequency band, like UHF or VHF, they upgraded to a higher frequency band. If you can use some existing ground station facilities, the workload can be smaller. In some cases, an amateur radio station and an experimental station are installed on one satellite at the same time. But the scope of work must be separated based on the uh, respective uh, legal laws and legal rules. In section 1.2, I'll talk about telecommunication subsystem architecture examples for micro, nano, pico satellite, including CubeSat. Architecture originally means the style and design of a building or buildings. This word also applies to system engineering. System architecture means the entire characteristics visualization of the target system, including the number of components, the kind of components, the connections between components. In the case of telecommunication, it's signal flow and its properties. Graphic representations such as boxes and arrows are often used to express system architecture. This diagram shows an example of telecommunication subsystem architecture design. In the early project phase, this kind of diagram is useful for better understanding and discussion among project members. As much as possible, the interfaces between elements should be represented in diagrams that makes it easy to identify their boundary condition, numbers, types, and so on. This diagram should be updated as the project progresses. In section 1.3, I will talk about key concepts for micro, nano, pico satellite, including CubeSat. Telecommunication objectives are categorized into four large groups. The first objective is to confirm the satellite's survival, like beacon or CW Morse signal. This survival signal is fundamental vital information, like the human heartbeat. Like Morse code, simple information can be sent, adding on this survival signal. The second objective is to get telemetry. It's digital packet data of housekeeping of the satellite, like temperature, voltage, current, status, and attitude parameters, and so on. CCSDS in professional or commercial mission, AX to five in amateur mission. As for CCSDS and IX.25 upload codes, uh, we, I will describe these, uh, those later. Not only digital, but also analog signals like voice or songs is also one of the options in amateur missions. The third objective is to control the satellite, change operational mode, start mission, 
camera shooting, and register the mission schedule. Basically, commanding is the starting point for all actions of a satellite. Therefore, a robust design of command set is very important to mission success. The fourth objective is to get the distance information from the satellite to ground, generally called lensing. Lensing is very important, especially for deep space missions. In the case of LEO, so low Earth orbit, GPS or GNSS based positioning is becoming popular nowadays. Therefore, the CubeSat project does not need to be aware of their positioning by ranging unless there is a special reason. If you are planning to demonstrate a new concept of lensing, this object is also an important point. This view graph summarizes primary design process for tele telecommunication subsystem. Step one is identify requirements. Orbit type, data amount, and update period should be organized and coordinated with satellite system engineers and launch interface providers. Step two is select frequency. Here, a CubeSat project must make uh, the first big decision about frequency, amateur or experimental or commercial. If the same frequency can be used continuously in a series of missions, the workload in this step will be relatively easy. The CubeSat project may experience the largest workload around the frequency allocation process for the first mission. The frequency allocation process consists of internal coordination and domestic coordination. The internal coordination, in the internal coordination, the CubeSat project must contact ITU, International Telecommunication Union, and or I ARU, International Amateur Radio Union, the domestic ministry or a domestic organization like local bureau of telecommunications will support your frequency allocation process. Please contact them as early as possible. Step three is select and design hardware like antenna, transmitter, and receiver. After fixing the frequency plan, you can start considering RF hardware. In the case of where existing products are used, a selection policy definition is needed. You may look for products by asking experienced people. However, it is important to define your own selection policies in advance, including which parameters will be critical to your mission and which parameters will be relatively flexible. Parameter organization is important in the case of making component by yourself too. Not only RF front end performance, but also system interface like digital signal and mechanical interface must be checked slowly. Some projects have been reworked due to inconsistencies in the interface with the OBC as a flight model phase. Step four is select data protocol. In the case of the using existing products, software functions, related to data protocols may be installed initially. If you design and implement RF hardware by yourselves, the CubeSat project 
must understand the protocol in detail. If you want to communicate with your own CubeSat on a one-to-one -one basis only with your own ground station equipment, you don't you don't not you do not necessarily need to use standard protocols if you want your your CubeSat signal to be received by amateur radio operators all over the world or use the commercial ground station service, you must apply standard data packet protocols for your CubeSat. Step five is identify link budget. So me, margin. The objective of this analysis is to confirm how much the received signal strength can be afforded. This affordance is usually called a link budget or a link margin. The largest factor that attenuates the RF strength is distance. In other factors, the following conditions are also important. Antenna gain, pattern and positioning, noise temperature in CubeSat, and so on. With various parameters organized on the spreadsheet, the link margin, link margin will be calculated for each telecommunication link, like uplink number one, uplink number two, downlink number one, downlink number two, and so on. This analysis results must be submitted for ITU and IARU, the domestic ministry or domestic organization during the frequency allocation process. This design loop is rarely completed in one trial. Therefore, iteration is needed until all interface combinations are requirements are satisfied. This biograph shows the consideration policy for a reasonably reliable telecommunication design and implementation. This ordering is based on my project experience named Hodoyoshi. This means just good in Japanese, proposed by Professor Nakasuka, the University of Tokyo, since 2010. Level one is keep simple configuration and simple operation plan, like single task. Even if you suddenly start to consider a complex system architecture, including advanced functions and backup systems, critical point that really need to be discussed carefully will be lost to find and diverse the discussion. First of all, please start by considering a simple configuration to realize the minimum system to achieve what you want to do. Level two is select device with low power consumption and that are demonstrated on Norbit as much as possible. As for CubeSat, larger power consumption device compared to the energy source capacity is bad for the entire feasibility. If the functions are the same, the product with the lower power consumption is the best choice. Level three is the CPU or equivalent control unit or digital controller of the telecommunication component should be able to recover from hang up by a power on reset, especially for tolerance against TID or SEU or SEL. Level four is failure recovery options and redundant configurations. Level five is 
first state of power con conversion efficiency. Or, sorry, uh, level five is first state of communication performance. This means bitrate. Level six is advanced functions like autonomous control or parallel tasks. After the upper level design and verifications have been considered slowly, move on to the next step. As the last topic of chapter one, I want to emphasize the importance of frequency selection again. All key design features and con constraints depend on which frequency used. Frequency allocation is the most important and the first action to kick off a satellite project. Lower frequency like VHF or UHF is well demonstrated. On the other hand, higher frequency, five to about 20 gigahertz is difficult to use, especially for a first time developer, like a university mission. A new possible option is a specified low power radio station, like LoRa, which is a kind of LPWA, low power wide area protocol. In terms of this new technology, several CubeSat have already demonstrated this on orbit. In the future, new space data link options are expected to be defined based on these state of the art communication technologies. Just as amateur radio satellites have asserted in the dawn of space communications, we also need constant effort to make the communication method faster and more convenient by CubeSat project. My message is that I want all participants of a CubeSat project to embarrass this ambition. Let's move on to chapter two antenna. In section 2.1, we will discuss the introduction of antenna. As you know, antenna are a key component for a satellite operation. An antenna can emit RF radio frequency to space and collect RF from space. Therefore, no antenna, no mission data from space. Antenna design is based on studying electromagnetic field. There are many kinds of antenna design. These images, these images show conceptual drawings of a typical antenna design. This is a very fundamental topic of electromagnetic study. All current flowing conductors can emit radio waves whose frequency is corresponding to its length potentially. This is expressed as a micro dipole model. Please remember that a tiny copper line on a PCB is always emitting RF. Antenna performance is affected by the following. Length corresponding to the target frequency, material, permissivity, shape like lot or plate or circle or ring or cubic or cone and so on. And combination of multiple antennas, so usually called arraying and relationship to ground plane, so distance and ground plane area. In section 2.2, I will talk about the major characteristics of antenna. 
Usually, antenna gain is expressed in unit of a dBi. Here, dB is the abbreviation of decibel, which means a unit for logarithmic scale representation of magnification. In the case considering RF signal intensity, since dealing with very small decimal numbers like 0 0.000001, logarithmic scale is useful. The subscript I of DBI stands for isotropic antenna. An additional important characteristic of an antenna is the antenna pattern. But briefly speaking, this is a range of wide, in other words, broad or narrow, in other words, B of antenna available. In an antenna pattern, HPBW, half power beam widths in degree, is the angle between the half power point of the peak duration of antenna gain and the peak duration. Peak direction, sorry, peak direction. As shown in this conceptual image, the antenna gain, antenna gain and the beam widths and the relationship of a trade-off. EIRP, effective isotropic radiated power, is the hypothetical uh, power that uh, would have to be would have be would have to be related by an isotropic antenna to gain the same. So equivalent signal strength as the actual source antenna in the direction of the antenna's strongest B. G over T, in other words, antenna gain to noise temperature is a figure of merit in the characterization of antenna performance. Z is the antenna gain in decibels the receiving frequency. And T is the equivalent noise temperature of the receiving system in Kelvin. The fact that noise is expressed in terms of temperature may surprise for newcomer. However, it is useful to remember this concept that higher temperature, the greater the noise radiation from the object. On the conversely, the smaller the temperature, the smaller the noise. As for VSWL, voltage standing wave ratio and characterization, I will describe them later. From the viewpoint of the physical condition of the antenna, which type should be selected? Deployable or non-deployable is a very important point. This is one of the most critical decisions of a CubeSat mission success. A major reason for CubeSat dead on arrival, dead on arrival states might be due to antenna deployment failure. In the non-deployment state, non-deployed state of the antenna, the performance of RF transmitting is near expected to nominal conditions. In section 2.3, I will talk about design and testing of typical antenna. In this view graph, I show the most fundamental design of monopole and dipole for CubeSat. In terms of material, thin, ribbon, steel tend to be selected as an antenna element to store inside the envelope of a CubeSat by bending. The adjustable parameters, uh, its length 
width and thickness. The length is the most important factor for performance. One side is a free end, one uh, and uh, power feed uh, point and mechanical interface are located on the other side, shown in like this. The center wire of the uh, coaxial cable is attached to this power feed point of the antenna element by soldering or spot welding. In the case of monopole, the outer seal of the coaxial cable is attached to ground, like this. In the case of a dipole, the outer seal of the coaxial cable is attached to the other paired antenna element, like this. A monopole antenna and a dipole antenna have the characteristics the characteristics of linear polarization, which means the electric field oscillating direction is kept in the same plane. Continuing from the previous page, I will introduce the possible antenna designs for CubeSat. This biograph shows the conceptual images of a turnstile antenna for CubeSat. A turnstile antenna consists of the four antenna elements, which have the same length positioned every 90 degrees. In other words, this antenna is a set of two dipole antennas. Therefore, it can be called a cross dipole, cross dipole antenna. The properties of a single element are the same as a dipole case. The advantage of this antenna is that the omnidirectional radiation pattern is easy to realize. For this purpose, the input power, input RF power is fed to four antenna elements by changing the phase every 90 degrees like zero degree, plus 90 degree, plus 180 degree, and plus 270 degree. This feeding is realized by changing the coaxial cable length or microstrip line length corresponding to every phase of the antenna. By utilizing this way of feeding, the electric field rotates in the direction of propagation of propagation of RF with time, which is called a circular polarization. It's distinguished by the direction of rotation. Uh, RHCP means right hand circular polarization and LHCP means left-hand circular polarization. This difference is given by the feeding order to every antenna element. Circular polarization is much more robust for space telecommunication than linear polarization. The ground station antenna, LHCP or RHCP must, be, must match satellite conditions as shown in these images. So please be careful as inappropriate combinations will result in greater loss. The other possible antenna design option is a patch antenna. When the frequency is a higher case, like L band, S band, C band, X band, and so on. The overview of a patch antenna is a plate style. Therefore, it's good to keep the envelope requirement of CubeSat. On the other hand, a relatively large surface area is required to attach it. This area allocation might be 
competed with the solar cell or camera aperture, then the trade-off is needed. This view graph shows the conceptual image of a patch antenna. And this picture shows product example made by our student uh, use in-house low-cost laboratory tools. Once each dimension is studied in the simulation software, it is manufactured by etching or man machining with NC machine tools. PCB and copper plate sizes depend on frequency. In the case of over 1.2 gigahertz, the entire antenna size is suitable for a typical 1U CubeSat surface of 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter. This antenna also has an omnidirectional radiation pattern, the same as the turnstile antenna. RHCP, right hand circular polarization, or LHCP, left hand circular polarization, depend on the notch layout. Notch layout. The performance of the notch uh, patch antenna is also attached by the permissivity of the PCB substrate material. Please be careful, the same point as turnstile antenna during operation. In this view graph, I described uh, impedance matching and antenna tuning. After designing manufacturing of the antenna, you have to perform initial performance checks. As you know, impedance is the degree of signal flow, uh, alternative current, easy or not. This is corresponding to resistance in the case of a direct current. The unit of impedance is ohm, usually 50 ohm or 75 ohm is used for standard RF components. In RF component, signal reflection happens at a different impedance point. To obtain effective signal transmission, this reflection should be as small as small, as small as possible. Therefore, the interface of the antenna and trans transceiver is necessary for impedance matching. Generally, VSWL, voltage standing wave ratio, is defined as the ratio of the partial standing waves amplitude at an antinode. This means maximum point to the amplitude at the node, minimum point along the line. The VSWL of the antenna is measured by an antenna analyzer or similar devices. Ideally, if there is no reflection, VSWL is 1.0. In realistic case, VSRW, VSWL should be less than 2.0 especially for a transmit antenna. VSW VSRW tuning is done by cutting antenna element in the case of lot type antennas, like monopole or dipole. In some cases, the VSWL tuning, the matching circuit may be inserted between antenna and transmitter or receiver. The matching circuit is able to be adjusted by changing the circuit constant, uh, by changing discrete parts, R, resistance, or C, condenser, or L, coil. For accurate measurements, a network analyzer is used, as shown in this picture. In section 2.4, I'll talk about examples of antenna products. In this view graph, I show existing CubeSat kit examples. These images shows 
CubeSat antenna system for 1U or 3U by ISI space. And Nanocom antenna uh, 430 kit provided uh, by uh, GOM space, respectively. These CubeSat kits provide a deployable antenna integrated structure. Frequency and data like uh, standardized for a typical amateur VHF and UHF CubeSat missions. The user does not need to consider a detailed design in the case of the combination of a recommended TX and RX and antenna. If TX and RX or antenna were to be newly developed, the user should verify the combinated performance of antenna and TX RX hardware. Rather than evaluating the performance of antenna on its own, it should be evaluated in combination with the structure of the entire satellite because the structure is the ground for satellite in general. When evaluating the antenna pattern of a satellite, it is useful to use a hollow model with structure frame and dummy solar panels and antennas. Therefore, it is very reasonable to treat a structure frame and solar panels and antennas as a standard kit. If a user interest is not focused on this development, this kind of standard CubeSat kit is very useful to reduce the project workload. Let's move on to chapter three, Radio Hardware TX Alex. In section 3.1, I will talk about introduction of radio hardware. This diagram shows the fundamental configuration of radio hardware. Major functions are the following. RF power amplify, frequency conversion, up combat or down combat, modulation and demodulation, DA conversion or AD conversion, baseband signal processing. Make or buy decision are important, especially for the newcomer, a huge number of developing items should be avoided because this may lead to the collapse of the project. In this context, I recommend you organize a list of items to be developed by yourselves for your CubeSat in the early project phase from the viewpoint of estimated cost, estimated hours, and required functions numbers as much as quantitatively possible. Then please check if that workload is too much in the initial project review. If your CubeSat major mission objectives include antenna or RF components, and if you have responsible experience uh, if you have reasonable experience, like uh, measuring in radio wave engineering in university or college, the choice of make the RF component is a reasonable decision. If not, the choice of buy is inevitable. CubeSat kit often include packaged TX and RX. In many, uh, in my option, uh, sorry, in my opinion, uh, RF front end design and implementation is more difficult than digital circuit. Higher frequency, higher difficulty. Occasionally, amateur radio operator, HAMS support may greatly help your project. So please contact your domestic amateur radio communicator 
community. The, the other approach to reduce the difficulty is the usage of SDR, so software defined radio. The knowledge of digital circuit, FPGS, and also softwares is required, but you can realize radio function by software as a RF hardware alternative. In section 3.2, I will talk about the major characteristics of radio hardware. The major characteristics of transmitter are the following. Transmit power, frequency suitability, bit rate, modulation, power efficiency. So this means transmit power over power consumption of module. The major specification of receiver are the following. Sensitivity, RSSI, signal, uh, received signal strength intensity, and modulation. Common points are the following. Operational temperature range, operational voltage, power consumption, dimensions, and mass. This table shows a typical value of uh, existing uh, example of component. In section 3.3, I will talk about the design and testing of radio hardware. If you make other components by yourselves, these topics are necessary to understand. I will provide described information when you want to buy too. In the digital and the nominal analog circuit, these points may not be so impact to performance. However, impedance must be considered in the RF circuit. Dimensions and shape of si signal line pattern on a PCB should be designed with considering properties corresponding to the wavelengths of the RF signal. It's important to consider the shielding to improve SN, S over N, signal to noise ratio. As for connector selection corresponding to the frequency, the coaxial connectors like BNC or SMA or UFL types must be used. Electrical interface with the system is also an important point. Signal line filtering or power line discoupling will reduce noise effect from to the system. Additionally, I will briefly introduce the key testing points of RF components. In both cases of TX and RX, the frequency suitability must be confirmed. This frequency suitability should be checked against supply voltage fluctuations, temperature fluctuations, and long-term operation factors. In, those, uh, in the case of TX, output RF power suitability, and in the case of RX, sensitivity is also important, respectively. After individual test, the combined operation of the transmitter and receiver must be performed because an uplink command signal will be received while transmitting downlink telemetry in actual operations. The detail of this end-to-end uh, -end test uh, explained in chapter five. In section 3.4, I will talk about examples of radio hardware. In this biograph, I will introduce two Japanese webshop example, makesat.com by Infostra, space4space.com by spacebd. In addition to these websites, you can also find some products 
for CubeSat from the providers such as ISI Space and GOM Space, as mentioned in the previous page in the Antenna Kit section. There are various products for different frequencies and communication rates. Users should select a suitable product for your CubeSat mission. If a user's interest is not focused on development, this kind of standard CubeSat kit is very useful to reduce the project workload. Let's move on to chapter four, signal processing and software functions. In this section 4.1, I will give an introduction of signal processing and software functions. This is a topic of fundamentals of telecommunication engineering. After understanding RF hardware, like antenna and TX and RX, as a next step, you should understand how to add information on the RF signal. This information means zero or one bit pattern in digital data. These images shows concepts of radio waves and how to add information. Pure RF signal, which includes no data, are called uh, carrier. Now we want to send digital data like hello world, so text data. Generally speaking, the zero or one bit pattern converted from original digital data is called baseband. There are four major ways to achieve sending the baseband by carrier. The first approach is on or off of the carrier signal transmission. This is CW, continuous wave. If you define the on state of the carrier signal is one, the off state is zero. You can get the baseband from this on and off pattern. However, if the off state of the carrier corresponds to zero, if you, if, uh, sorry, you are not able to discriminate. It is a meaningful zero or you were, to, were not able to receive the carrier. Therefore, it's better to define three states like bar and dot and space. So this is Morse code. In the case of Morse code transmission, the length of bar is defined as three times of the length of dot. The second approach is amplitude change of the signal of carrier. If you define the large amplitude state of the carrier signal as one, the small amplitude state is zero, you can get the baseband from this amplitude changing pattern. The third approach is a frequency change of the carrier signal. If you define the higher frequency of the carrier signal as one, the lower frequency state is zero. You can get the baseband pattern from this frequency changing pattern. The fourth approach is a phase change of the carrier signal. If you define the zero degree start state of the carrier signal as one, the 180 degree start case is zero. You can get the baseband from this phase changing pattern. In section uh, 4.2, I'll talk about the major characteristics of signal processing and software functions. As described in the previous page, key points of information transfer transferring 
uh, amplitude, frequency, and phase of the carrier signal. Superposing of the carrier signal and the baseband signal, in other words, data conversion, digital to analog signal is called modulation. The inverted inverse process is called demodulation. Demodulation. I show the major terms of modulation method in this table. CW continuous wave has no modulation. So CW just on or off of the carrier signal. This is very simple, legacy, but robust. To send digital packet data, uh, FM frequency modulation plus FSK frequency shift keying is the most popular way in the amateur radio. Occasionally, this FSK can be expressed as AFSK, audio frequency shift keying, which emphasizes the audio sound based, like 2040, 2400 hertz. The bitrate is 1200 BPS in nominal usage. In the case of GMSK, uh, Gaussian filtered minimum shift king, uh, 9600 BPS or higher speed, you may investigate reasonable IC to realize the functions. To achieve higher bitrate communication, advanced communication uh, method, advanced modulation methods like QPSK or GMSK must be considered. In section 4.3, I will talk about design and testing of signal processing. This is a tip, uh, topic about the fundamentals of network communication engineering, like the internet. For better understanding of the entire framework of communication, layered models are useful. The most famous model is open system interconnection model called as OSI model. This model was developed by the International Organization for Standard, Stand Standardization, ISO, to classify and clarify the roles of the many protocols used in computer networks. This table shows the summary of the OSI model. The OSI model defines communication functions, communication protocols in seven layers. This is conceptual model for understanding the all over, overall architecture of the internet communications. So digital packet design of telecommunication of CubeSat is also based on this OSI model concept. In this biograph, I introduce major protocols for satellite data communications. This diagram shows the basic packet structure of each protocol. The first example is AX.25 in amateur radio communication. This protocol was a protocol originally delivered from layer two of the X.25 protocol suites and designed for use by amateur radio operators in 1984. AX.25 version 2.0 and later occupies the data link layer, the second layer of the OSI model. This protocol was originally used not only for satellite communication, but also for ground to ground communication. The second example is CSP, CubeSat space protocol. 
This protocol was developed by a group of students from Olbo University in 2008 and further developed the, for the AAU SAT3 CubeSat mission in 2013 launched. The third example is CCSDS, Consultative Committee for CubeSat, sorry, CCSDS, Consultative Committee for Space Data Systems, Space Packet Protocol. This is a standard protocol for a professional or commercial satellite missions. Comparing with this protocol facilitates the use of any commercial communication antenna in the world. So, sorry, complying with this protocol facilitates the use of any commercial communication antenna in the world. This protocol has the error correction function by RS code. So this means read Solomon code. Therefore, robust communication is realized. For detailed descri uh, descriptions of each protocols, please refer to the official documents. If you want to communicate with your own CubeSat on a one-to-one -one basis only with your own ground station equipment, you, don't, you do not necessarily need to use standard protocols. If you want the other ground stations to receive your CubeSat telemetry, you need to consider the protocol to be suitable for your objectives. Let's move on chapter five, telecommunication subsystem integration. In section 5.1, I will talk about end-to-end -end test of telecommunication. As for end-to-end -end test of telecommunication of CubeSat, one side of the end is the CubeSat. The other side of the end is the ground station. Therefore, the appropriate understanding and preparation of ground station is important. In this view graph, I introduce an example of ground station antenna facilities implementation based on our campus. These pictures shows our ground station, indoor facilities, and outdoor antennas at Tokyo University, Utsunomiya campus. Generally speaking, the development of ground station facilities should be completed before your satellite right model phase. Ideally, before starting your new CubeSat project, you should have enough experience by using ground stations to acquire existing satellite signals. It's very important to perform end-to-end -end test of telecommunication subsystem using actual ground station facilities. In every project phase, you should consider the appropriate test configuration as the following. Before getting the license or radio station, uh, wired test by coaxial cable between satellite system and ground station facilities. After license, uh, RF link test by flight model antenna. To emulate loss, caused by long distance from the satellite, insert the attenuators to make the value equivalent to the actual operation. Before launch station antenna, uh, facility development, uh, consider the following points is important. Uh, location, skyline measurement. Skyline means the line connected with elevation 
uh, conditions with no obst obst obstructions like buildings or forest at every azimuth direction. Usually, the skyline almost equal to the uh, horizon line uh, around the antenna. However, you should be careful if there are tall buildings around the antenna. In our case, the UHF and VHF antenna had few obstacles because of taller tower support. However, uh, around the parabola antenna, we confirm the skyline by camera images because there are some buildings. This graph shows the result. As shown in this graph, it is useful to identify the boundary conditions of the skyline uh, quantitatively for actual operation. So next point is uh, surrounding RF noise source. This is also necessary to avoid radio interference close to your operating frequency. If there are always radio waves transmitting, there may be bad effect for your CubeSat operation. Therefore, so, so, slow surveys, so careful survey are needed because starting, uh, before starting uh, construction of the antenna facility. In some cases, you may find that there is communication interference during actual operations. The remaining two points are related to the uh, construction of the antenna facility based on my experiences. Lo roof load capability. Uh, reinforcement structure of the roof may be required. This point depends on the local law or regression of the building. In some cases, because the load capacity of the building was not enough and the enforcement work could not be done, we changed the another location. Lightning load. Because lightning strikes are one of the critical risks of the antenna, it's important to protect it with a lightning rod. If the candidate place to build a new antenna tower is without a buried range of the existing lightning rod, a new lightning rod may be required to be installed. This also depends on the local law or regulation of the building. In this view graph, I introduce a long distance communication test based on our experience. In Tokyo University, we are developing microsatellites and CubeSat. As described in the previous page, after getting a radio station license from local bureau of telecommunications, we went to uh, the mountain, Mount Haguro, uh, the nearby uh, mountain, to perform an RF communication test. This mountain is located just north of our campus. The distance is about 10 kilometers. This place is popular and famous for local amateur radio people of Tochigi, Japan. Thus, it's important to find a good location where radio transmissions can be made from some distance to your ground station antenna, such as a mountain top or a tall building. A roof uh, viewing deck, shown in this picture, is useful for test uh, setting facility, including antenna panels and satellite components and a portable battery, in, as shown in these pictures. We transmit RF signals to our ground station antenna from this place. We confirm uh, telemetry 
and command checked by using actual GAN antenna. This kind of test is also useful to perform ground station antenna pointing accuracy check. An attenuator of uh, appropriate value may be inserted between the transmitter and the antenna to simulate the RF power attenuation over a distance corresponding to the actual orbit. As the last topic of chapter five, I will share a performance test related to the telecommunication subsystem. Usually, these tests are conducted in the radio anechoic chamber by using RF transmission. First, we check uh, EMC, electromagnetic capability. The objective is identifying internal noise source. Bad noise tend to become especially from EPS because of there are large current loop, high frequency switching regulators. System frequency management is important, like CPU clock and switching frequency of regulators. The harmonic frequency emitted from these unexpected noise source can be a problem, especially for the frequency of the receiving system. If the noise effects are too bad to realize nominal communication, take action such as adding electromagnetic shielding like aluminum or copper sheet metal spot casing to the noise sources. There may be problems with the, the EPS circuit design or implementation, in which case we, were, we will work with the EPS engineer to solve the problem. Second, we test the EMI, electromagnetic interference. The objective is to confirm the effect on the satellites inside to outside equipment on launcher or ISS. Usually, requirements describe the launcher's ICD interface control document. The CubeSat project must comply with the frequency and EIRP requirements. If the EMI effects are too bad to comply with the requirement, the CubeSat project should consider changing the TX hardware or uh, redesigning of the TX antenna. This may be avoided by conf confirming to a uh, cold launch with three inhibit. Uh, it depends on the launch coordination. Finally, we perform the operational test. The objective is to perform the operational capability of downlink duty or power mode or bitrate at the entire system level, including power budget feasibility. A part of this test may be performed at the long distance communication test from outside. However, since it is difficult to continue testing from outdoor for a long time, the test will be performed indoors generally. If a bad condition or trouble was found through the operational test, so please consider adjustable parameters like duty ratio of TX or power mode out of the power. This table shows checkpoints of telecommunication design and implementation summary. Please use a, this table for reviewing this lecture. Chapter six, conclusion. Finally, I will conclude this lecture as the following. Telecommunication is a very long-term activity. Satellite project start from frequency allocation. Then satellite project finish with sending the RF 
transmitting termination command. The antenna, the most critical item for successful communication of a CubeSat. Please select a suitable design for system architecture and project maturity. As for RF hardware, make or buy decisions are important. Please uh, select a suitable product for requirements like bitrate and protocols and project maturity. As for telecommunication subsystem end to end test, uh, note the following. EMC must be conformed to realize better communication. In the worst case, the communication quality is not as good as the link analysis. EMI must be confirmed to comply with the launches or ISS requirements. This may be avoided by confirming to a cold launch with three inhibits. Operational tests and long distance tests are useful to find uh, potential problems. CubeSat project should perform these tests as long as possible for mission success. Thank you for your kind listening. That's all for this lecture. Thank you.